it's me Digital Devil Arts 25 and I'm back with another video. I know it's been a super long time um, but I just wanted to uh, show off some stuff that I got in the mail a while ago. Uh, well I got it a few days ago but I purchased them about maybe two months ago um, and you might be wondering what this new setup is. This is basically uh, I'm just practicing this setup. Uh, for a new series uh, of videos I would like to do called Page by Page where I basically go through different like art books and stuff. Um, so the first one, uh, first item I like to show off because uh, I got a few of them. Um, so this first one here is the Persona Trinity Soul uh, visual design book. So yeah, visual book. Um, and it's basically just the, the art book for the show. Um, so yeah, it comes right here. So at the back we have Akihiko and uh, Ryo. And then here at the front we have uh, Kanzato Shin, Jun, and uh, Ryo again with his persona uh, uh, Abel. And then as we go in, I'm not going to do the whole book. Uh, because I'd like to do that in a separate video, but I just wanted to show off what exactly it's in here. So yeah, there's different illustrations from the show. Um, and as you guys know, I love this show. I absolutely adore it, and I think it's really a, a big shame that people don't seem to like it at all. Uh, I think it really it has a lot of passion and love uh, put into it, and it was really like it really is in the spirit of like the originals like Persona 1 um, and Persona 3 in this weird like combination of the first three like chapters of the the whole series but yeah I was really happy with this um, it is a bit damaged I find um, but overall it's just really awesome to have this in my hand not a lot of people like have any sort of Persona Trinity Soul memorabilia. Um, so moving on to my second item. Um, so I've done an unboxing of this before. Um, so this is volume two of the Persona Trinity Soul uh, DVDs. Uh, just zoom in a little bit. Um, but yeah, so this is volume two. As it's, it's the same as in my other unboxing, the kind of case and everything. I think it's really beautiful. I have this artwork of the three brothers again over a snowscape. Um, and yeah, so I don't actually have the disc in here because it's in, uh, I think it's in my computer. The computer right next to me. So I have it right here. So it actually has a Rio's persona on it, which I think is Kane. And then if we open up, like just like the other one, the cover art actually comes off and is a little booklet. And it has some information about the episodes and then some of the stuff that is in the art book as well, but also stuff that's not in my art book for some reason. Uh, some of the backdrops. Um, which would be really useful because I'd like to do a small project similar to the Persona 2 project. You might have seen me post some of the drawings uh, for Persona Trinity Soul um, because I, I have the prologue CD and it would be nice to like do something like that and I could just scan these and then use them as the backdrop. That would be really nice and easy. Uh, cute little drawing of June. I love June. Uh, for those of you who don't know, he's basically like the scanner type for Trinity Soul, but because it's a lot more loose and less like RPG focused because it's specifically a show and not an adaptation of the game, it's obviously not used in the same way. But to my surprise, so at, like with the, the first volume, it came with the prologue CD, which I didn't know was going to be in there. Um, because these are the limited editions and this time I was also surprised even more because it actually came with a physical copy of the Whale Feathers book so Kujira no Hana um, which is 
Uh, this is not a officially published book. This is just a piece of memorabilia that comes with this. So you can't purchase this anywhere else. Um, so if you haven't watched it or if you need a bit of a reminder, this book is part of the plot of Persona Eternity Soul. Is the book that the parents of the three brothers uh, co like published together, and is basically their legacy. Um, and it has a lot to do with the plot of the show. And it actually, I have a real life copy of it, which is really cool. At the back it says, uh, not for sale. Um, and it features this wonderful, uh, what looks like, um, acrylic paintings, maybe? Uh, but they're really nice, and like, I'm really surprised to see how nice it is in your, like, in your hands. Um, I don't know if these are like maybe a common thing in Japan, these like story picture books, uh, because it's also like a thing in the Black Rock Shooter anime. Um, but yeah, it, it's just really beautiful. They have all these little paintings inside. And like you can tell like it's a, it's like a scan of a real painting or something like that because it has the texture of the, the paper slash canvas. Uh, which, as an art student, like, I know... I don't really know how to explain this, but, like, the materiality is really, like, speaking to me. And it's just, it's very abstract. It kind of reminds me of the Persona 2 novels, the Anna novels. But, yeah, it's really nice. If you'd like, I could try to find the, uh, translated version. We can do, like, a, sh a mini page-by-page -page along with this, but... Yeah, um, and then it says, uh, what is that? Saku Kanzato Shigeru e Kanzato Haruka, which is the, their parents. Uh, so the drawings were by their mother, and then the writing, I guess, was their father. But yeah, uh, so I won't give you any spoilers, but this is uh, very integral to the story. And then on to some Persona 5 stuff. Um, so this I was really excited to get. Um, it is the uh, Persona 5 Mementos Missions uh, manga. Well, the first volume. I don't know if they've published any of the other volumes yet. Uh, I'd be surprised if they've taken that long before making the others. Um, but yeah, so this is the uh, manga drawn and I guess written by Rokuro Saito who is the artist who also did um, the Ultimax manga and I'm not really sure what else he's done with Persona uh, but I really adore his style. It took me a bit of getting used to with the facial proportions because I feel like he does kind of scrunch them down in a weird way but at the end of the day he does some really beautiful work uh, especially with their hands and bodies it's just like the the detail that he'll put into these is really nice and I feel like uh, he's probably the manga artist if not one of just the artists in general for Persona who understands the characters on such a uh, I don't know how to say this but like to me he feels like the the Sonic Mania team but for Persona like he understands them so well and characterizes them in such a nice way, even if it's just in drawings, you just feel like their energy come across really nicely. Um, but yeah, so you, here you see on the spine, got uh, Ren, I guess, uh, published by, what is that, DC Next? I've never heard of that before. But yeah, so Phantom Thieves, Momentous Mission, it's volume one, author, Atlas, all that. And it has this nice little art artwork here at the back with uh, Akechi Makoto Futaba uh, Yusuke. Um, and I don't really understand the plot of this book because I can't read it, um, but I should take the time to uh, find the scans online because I don't think they'll ever make an English publication of it, and if they do, they'll probably blow it up in size and make it all ugly and stuff. Um, which I don't like. This is such a comfortable and nice size. I don't want, I don't understand why American publishers always kind of screw with it. But when it comes to, for example, Shonen Jump comes in a really nice size. But I think it's also blown up in size, but it's not as it's not as offensible. It's only like half an inch larger, and it's perfect. So I wish I wish more people would just go along with what Shonen Jump does with the proportions, but 
that aside, I really, really, I love the art in here. It's so nice. But yeah. And it has this little, like, sleeve here. And take it off. I keep trying to want to flip the camera because I know the camera's looking at it like that, but in editing I'm going to have to flip the footage. And yeah, and when you take off the jacket, it looks like this, which is really interesting. Um, I can't tell if this is cool or just kind of silly, but <laughs> it, does look, it does look interesting and visually kind of satisfying. Oh, and this was in the back of the, inside the art book. And then the fourth item I got, like, all of these things came in the same, like, package, because it got consolidated shipping. But this is the, uh, Persona 4 Daybreakers, uh, Blu-ray. Um, and I'm so happy to find this, because you, normally on eBay, this would be, like, 50 or 60 dollars. Uh, but I use a website called buy.jp and it's such a good service because it you just buy you purchase uh, you purchase the item from a seller in Japan who sells locally and then you buy it through buy and so they'll purchase it from the uh, how would you say purchase it from the seller and then ship it to their warehouse because the seller doesn't ship internationally and then the warehouse will, you just pay the additional shipping and they'll sell, uh, send it from their warehouse to you. So essentially bridging the gap between the local sellers in Japan and uh, international buyers. Uh, which I think is an amazing service and I'm really happy that it exists. But that said, I absolutely love this box and everything, this whole setup, it's really nice. So you have this like clear plastic uh, casing and so you have the Phantom Thieves logo. It looks exactly the way like the, the first trailers did. And then when you pull it off, all of the graphics come off and it has this beautiful like simplified design. And the finish on this is really, really nice. So it has this like semi-gloss kind of look to it, but you can actually feel the, the, the stars. I don't know if you can catch all the detail here, but you can just touch it and you feel the like bumps of the stars on it. And it looks really, really nice. <laughs> um, and it opens up like a book like this. And then here you have the information. So like the Blu-ray, stereo, HD, all of that stuff which you normally you would find at the back of the box. And then you have some Aniplex stuff, serial number, so that's not a code, go, don't go trying it, it doesn't do anything. And then a, the calling card, which the Phantom Thieves gives to uh, Kazuya Makigami. Uh, can't read it, although it says uh, Sin here. I think that's Sin. I obviously recognize it from Persona 2. <laughs> yeah, Sin. It's me. Um, but yeah, I can't read that. My, I'm not advanced enough. So right here we have the Blu-ray disc itself, and we have the Nightbreakers uh, drama CD. I don't actually know what it's about. Uh, I'm not sure if the stories themselves are connected or not, uh, because if you guys remember, this came out before the game, so I don't know exactly how much they were willing to spoil with it. Uh, but it seems as though, I don't know, I feel like so much, like, companies right now are spoiling so much of their games, it's kind of disappointing when you get the real thing and you realize that everything they showed basically was the whole game and there's not much left of it. Um, with Persona 5, that wasn't exactly the case, but I'm still bringing it up because I'm kind of salty about it. <laughs> but yeah, so here in the spine it says Persona 5, the animation, the Daybreakers. Yeah. Yeah. And the inside is really quite nice. And I, this here was at the back of it. Uh, like that, yeah. Um, well, it had the plastic wrapping, and then when you take it off, it basically just falls off. So this is either 
keep it and do nothing with it or throw it out. Um, so I'm not exactly sure. This is an issue I find with a lot of Japanese imported stuff that I get. There's just always like a really cool like cover thing and then once you take the wrapping off it's just loose and you can't keep it in anywhere. This thing doesn't seal close so all of this stuff is just kind of loose in it. Just kind of set it down on top of it and hope it doesn't slide out. <laughs> but that said, I'm really really happy with my purchase. If any, I didn't know this, I didn't really expect this at all because it wasn't sold to any... This was only sold for Japanese viewers, um, but the the disc itself has an English sub on it, so if anyone ever wanted to purchase this, it actually has subs in it. Uh, the Trinity Soul DVDs do not have any subs, I just have them uh, basically for the HD, and just because I love Trinity Soul, I think I should have something of it. <laughs> And the last little thing I have here is something I've actually had for a few months, but I realized that I never showed it off, um, which is the Persona 2 Innocent Sin, the errors of their used uh, drama CD. Um, so this, as you guys know, I am doing the Persona 2 fan project, which is an animation adaptation of this very drama CD. So I really, I've gained quite a bit of re a reputation from this project, and I felt like I really owed it to the disc, I guess, to purchase it myself and have my own copy. Um, and also just because I'm a Persona collector, I guess, I really just wanted this and because it has Tatsuya and June because, uh, like, why not? <laughs> so yeah, so the cover right here we have the, have this like solar system map overlaid on them and then we have this really, really uh, corny kind of very 90s looking or like early 2000s looking font that you could probably do with like word <laughs> and then here on the the what would you call this like the spine uh, persona 2 innocent sin heirs of the youth atlas here and then some really really nice uh hd portraits of the um innocent sin crew uh what's interesting though is that this is obviously if you listen to the first track, this is takes basically the premise is uh, Persona 2, Eternal Punishment, Tatsuya, remembering things about Innocent Sin. So the first track on the CD is the opening of Eternal Punishment in a certain way. And then here when you open it up, very random, but there's a I guess a kiwi bird on it. It's just this really pleasant looking disc that you wouldn't expect. And here we have Igor and Radamanthus for some reason. There we go. And there's some really weird stuff in here. So, sound director and music composer. This person, I don't know if it's a woman or not, <laughs> but I can't read that. And then here we have the legendary Satomi Tadashi scenario writer. So I guess he wrote this, uh, the stuff for this drama CD himself, and I love him for it. <laughs> it's such a good CD, and I'm really happy to be working on it the way I am, and to see everyone supporting me for it. So I have been making some slow progress. The animation opening is almost complete. I've still got a few uh, segments to finish up, but I am making steady progress. Um, yeah, see, so we have some Eternal Punishment stuff here. Next coming soon. Huh. Okay, so that's interesting. This might have been released before Eternal Punishment actually came out. And the first track may have been a sort of glimpse. That's so weird. <laughs> yeah, so we have a little drawing here of... Uh, IS crew, and we have a poltergeist, and I guess Tatsuya decides to draw on its face, <laughs> and it looks really funny. I don't know if you guys can really see it. And then we have here the song lyrics for Open Your Heart, um, which looking at it now makes me think of Sonic Adventure. <laughs> lyrics for Love Beam, China Love, I'm in You. 
some of the songs on this, I have to say, are kind of horrible, and some of them really, really slap. Uh, <laughs> drawing of Gnarly, that's really fun. Demon Painter, or Kazuma Kaneko. <laughs> I didn't notice this, but we have Igor here poking up with a little heart. Yeah. The Persona Mambo here. Anyways. Oh, and here, and you open it up, it actually has a name list at the back there. <laughs> but yeah, I hope I wasn't taking too long with this video, but thank you so much for joining me. Uh, let me know what exactly you would like to see me uh, cover on the page by page series. So I have some options. So I have the Trinity Soul book, the Persona 4 Dancing All Night official visual book. Persona 4 Arena uh, official design works. The Persona 3 official design works. And then I have two of those um, Amano The Art of Final Fantasy books that we could also check out. I feel like they're really cool. I just want to show off basically everything that's inside these books literally go page by page, give some opinions, some information, and read through some of the information that's in it, just for the fun of it, um, and to kind of help document what exactly Atlas has published. Um, this obviously doesn't really work with like manga or anything like that, so really only, I guess, lore books and um, art books, because, I mean, it could take ages if it were anything else. But yeah, thank you so much for joining. Uh, I'd like to take the moment to thank some of my new patrons because it's been a while that I've had my Patreon up, but I haven't taken the time to thank any of them. Uh, hopefully this is still recording. Yeah, okay. Alright, so I would like to take a moment to thank this month's uh, patrons. and. Uh, but they, I believe they've all uh, signed up last month, which is a uh, huge thanks to Alexia, Alexia Juliet, uh, Daniel Hancock, Gangster Gangstino, and Lauren D for the support. It really does mean a lot. Um, so if you would like to support me on Patreon, just go and check out uh, the links in the description below. Uh, I have all of my social media along with my uh, Patreon there for you to check out. Um, so thank you so much for watching, I will catch you all next time. So excited about the new news for uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Can't wait to see the uh, Square Enix stream tonight. <laughs> Alright, catch you guys later, thank you so much, bye!